Welcome back everybody, this is Will here with Hallett's Tools and Tech. I'm here with my trusty uh, camera girl, my daughter Leanne. Alright, what we're, we're going to work on today is we're going to work on this uh, 2014 Toyota Camry again. Uh, this time we're going to change the transmission uh, pan gasket, the filter, and uh, whatever fluid's in the pan itself. This transmission holds about six quarts, give or take. Um, I'm only going to need about three quarts because I'm not going to be doing a complete flush of the system. I'm just going to be taking out whatever's in the pan. Um, the reason why I'm going to do this is, uh, so I went to the dealership. This one, this particular model doesn't have a dipstick. It's got the uh, 24 millimeter on the side that you got to check the fluid, or that you add the fluid level in. And the way you check the fluid level, we're going to have to get into that. You got to get the temperature between about 104 to 112 degrees on the, on the transmission pan while the system's running, while the system's leveled out, and then it has a tube inside the pan that the, that adjusts the level for the, uh, the fluid. So at that temperature, idling, it should just barely trickle out when we pull the, uh, the bottom plug out. And I'm gonna show you all that as soon as we get to that point. But the reason why I went ahead, and I'm gonna do this myself, it's a little bit trickier than an average transmission that has the dipstick and everything, is because the cost. I took it to uh, standard uh, lube station around here. I won't uh, say any names, but they don't. Uh, they won't even touch it. So I took it to the dealership, and they want about. They couldn't give me an exact price, but it's between 215 to 275 dollars to change it. And then I took it to a mechanic shop. I mean a transmission shop, and they wanted closer to 300 to change it out. And uh, so to save money and to make sure I get it done the way I like to. I'm going to go ahead and take on this product myself. Uh, there's, you know, if you're willing to take the risk to do the work yourself, you know, that's great. But if you do, if you feel like you can't do this job, definitely just take it to a professional and have them have them do it. That way, you don't have to worry about any kind of issues. But for me, I'm stubborn. I like to do my own maintenance if I can. So I'm going to take this project on, and we'll see how it goes. Let's take a look at some of the uh, parts that we're going to need for this uh, project here. So if you look down here, I've got. Uh, so you got to make sure you have the right fluid for these Toyotas. It does take a special kind of fluid. You can go to the dealership and pay a little bit more for it, or you can. I went to uh, the parts store and I just got the uh, Valvoline Max Life Full Synthetic. And what I was looking for for this Toyota is that this fluid is for a Toyota or a Lexus type, and they have the uh, WS, the Whiskey Sierra. That is the type of fluid that I need for this particular transmission to, uh, uh, you know, for it to operate properly. I also got me a oil dry and what this is luckily this uh, pan is not very big so I didn't need to buy a big pan to be able to cover the surface area of my driveway to make sure no fluid gets out what helps me out as well is this has a drain plug on it so I'm gonna be able to drain most of the fluid out before I even take that pan off that'll save me from having a bunch of fluid coming out all over the place but I'm gonna have this on the ground underneath my oil catch just to, just a one extra precaution to keep any fluid from getting on the ground. I have some cat litter in the back if I need it. If I do spill, I want to make sure I don't uh, contaminate any of the water around here by having any kind of spillage. Uh, next, this is the uh, transmission kit that I purchased, um, and it just comes with a basic filter and a rubber gasket. So here's the filter that I'm looking at. Looks like it's just going to have two bolts holding that beast up in there. Here's the rubber gasket. It kind of gives you an idea of how small the pan is that I'm working with. So I got this for uh, transferring. Once I catch all the fluid, I'm going to transfer it into this big old tube, big old uh, catch here. And the reason why I bought this jug here is because I like the, it's got a big three inch opening on the top. It's easy for me to pour without uh, having to spill. So uh, then I'll take that to the parts uh, shop and uh, recycle the fluids so that way we don't, we, we properly dispose of the fluid. Um, that's pretty much it for the parts. Unfortunately, it's going to take a little bit to actually change this out, so let's get started. Hello everyone, so the first thing I'm going to do is i got to uh, disconnect the, the negative terminal on the battery so that we don't have to worry about anything going on with uh, someone starting it up or inadvertently hitting any wires while they're uh, down underneath the vehicle. Um, but I just want to make a quick note on jacking up the, the Toyota Camry. Um, I've got a big floor jack. If you take a look here, I've got it already in position. And there's a, a frame underneath. You want to make sure you get on the frame of the vehicle. They got a 
they got a design you can see the cut in the plastic where they have a, a kind of a bump on the frame that you can actually jack up in the front so I never crawl underneath any vehicle unless I have jack stands so you want to make sure safety comes first before anything um, so after I jack this up I'm gonna put jack stands underneath it on both the front and the back before I even think about going underneath it but before I jack up the front wheel drive car which is what the Toyota Camry is I got to make sure that I engage the emergency brake in the back because what will happen is I have a little bit of a slope on this driveway if I go jacking this car up now and it lifts those front tires up then there's nothing to keep that car from rolling back unless I engage that emergency brake so it's always a good idea to before you start jacking up a car and uh, get working on it if you can just engage that emergency brake in the back keep things from moving around once I jack it up in the back put the stands underneath there it's not going to go anywhere Alright, I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at how I jacked up the front part of this Toyota. So if you look here, you'll see that opening in the plastic that I was talking about. Um, I just kind of put the jack within that, that opening and there's a frame that the jack will actually be on. So that frame right there is what you want to make sure you're jacking up so that way it can, it can handle the weight of the vehicle. Also, I've got my two jack stands. Put them right up underneath there, right up underneath the frame where they're not going to go anywhere. Next I'll go ahead and jack up the back of the vehicle, put my stands up under the back, and then put a leveling device on this to make sure that it's actually uh, that it's uh, level before I start working on it. Okay, this is where I put my jack. I set the jack for the uh, the back. It's got a nice little part there in the center able to jack both sides. I have the jack stands underneath the frame and I have that on both sides but I don't have the jack stands all the way seated. They're there for safety but they're not going to be uh, it's not going to be uh, on the jack stand because I have to level this vehicle out so I'm using the jack in the back to set the leveler and the leveler is right here. It's a simple magnetic level that I put on the frame of the vehicle and I just make sure that that uh, level that bubbles in the center there and then I know that my vehicle's level so I can use it for the adjustment of the fluid level. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, take off the the protective plastic over the 24 millimeter bolt that we're going to use to add the fluid to this transmission. So if you can see here, I got one 10 millimeter bolt there, one 10 millimeter there. I'm not gonna remove the entire cover. I'm just gonna move this out of the way so that way I can get to that bolt. All right, now that I have that out of the way, we've exposed our 24 millimeter check plug on the side here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a 24 millimeter socket and, and take that off before I even think about pulling anything out or, or draining the fluid. I wanna make sure I'm able to at least add fluid to it. So let me go ahead and get that socket now. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take off that 24 millimeter. Wig get down here so I can get some more torque. Ah, she popped off there. Grab my socket. We got that beast stuff there and we know we can top this off once we get the fluid drained out of it so I'll put this in a safe spot all right here's the uh, drain plug I was talking about here and what this takes is this uh, six millimeter um, Allen hex head and it just pulls that plug right there and inside is a another tube that screws up in there that takes the same socket so I'm gonna remove this, and I'll remove that tube, and I'll let the fluid drain. And this is the pan, that gasket that we were looking at before will go on there. I'm also gonna remove this plastic cover right here as well. All right, I went ahead and took out that, uh, that bottom bolt there, and it seems like it's kind of deceptive. You think that the fluid's out of it, but remember, it's got that tube that goes up in there. So I'm gonna grab my, uh, Hex tool. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. So 
that way, we can get the rest of this fluid out of here before I drop that pan. And this just goes right up into that same hole. And I'm just gonna remove that tube. And notice I got my rubber gloves on. It's a good idea to have eye protection, which these uh, sunglasses work good for. And protect your skin. You know, this transmission fluid can't be good for your skin, so wear rubber gloves whenever possible. And I think it's about to come out. So there you can see, this is that tube I was talking about, and this is the level the fluid has to be between 104 degrees and 112 degrees. You know, you want the fluid to be at this level and barely trickling down this tube. So you can see how it's kind of funny to change these things, but uh, you know what, 300 bucks, I'll just go ahead and just change it myself. The uh, total parts I got invested, I guess I, I should have talked about that. The, um, the filter kit was about 40 bucks and each quart of uh, transmission fluid was about seven bucks. Uh, another good thing about this, you see a lot of stuff. You don't know if people are doing the job correctly or if they're even doing the job at all. Sometimes you'll take a vehicle to a shop and they won't even, they won't even uh, change the fluid and still charge you for it. So I, uh, at least this way I know it's getting done and it's getting done to the best of my abilities. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic piece here, or at least get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove this pan. Looks like it's 10 millimeter bolts all the way around that beast. So a good tool to have is I always like these little quarter inch 10 millimeter swivel socket here. Well, uh, normally I would have to pull this out of the way, but with this quarter inch swivel socket, I'm able to just get up in there like so and I could go ahead and break these bolts loose without having to take that plastic piece off. So it comes in handy to have. Uh, if you don't have one, I recommend having one on, you know, having one in your tool kit. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start removing these bolts one at a time. I always do the more challenging bolts first, so that way I get them out of the way and then get, do the easiest bolts last. I'll usually leave two on at the end that I'll just kinda take off very slowly as I pull the pan off. But there's my first one. And I believe this is a 19 bolt pan, so only 18 more to go. All right, looking at our, our pan here, it's not too bad. The nice thing is, is it's clean all the way around here. So all I gotta do is I'm gonna wipe this out really good with towels. I wanna note that you got these three magnets here and you can already see some sludge on those magnets, probably a little bit of metal. You know, they pick up all the metal chips and stuff and the uh, transmission fluid as the transmission wears. So you wanna make sure you clean, looks like there's four magnets in here. I'm gonna make sure I clean all those magnets out really good, clean all this off really good before I put the new gasket. I already seated up the new gasket to make sure that it fits right and it's a good match, so we're in business. So while I'm going over and cleaning the, putting the other filter in and cleaning the uh, transmission off, I'm gonna tip this upside down, just let it continue to drain into my little drain catch there. And then uh, I will get back to that and clean that later. All right, looks like we got the pan off. It wasn't too bad. I did note that there was one bolt that I had to use a pry bar to kind of lift the transmission up to be able to get to that bolt. So sometimes you may have to tweak it, but everything else was pretty easy to get to. I've got the new filter here and it's gonna slide right up in here. So I know that there's a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter here. So all I gotta do is take these two 10 millimeters off and that filter shall, will come right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Gonna break it loose and then I'll just use go by hand to take these things out of there I'm gonna hold that filter on there so it doesn't pop out on me and make a big mess all right there's one bolt down Clean up this, dry off the socket a little bit so I can get a better grip on it. With 
these rubber gloves on, it's a little bit difficult to get the uh, get a good grip on these little bolts here, but I'd rather use these rubber gloves to keep my hands clean. There's the second bolt. Now I should be able to pop this thing out of here. I'm gonna go real slow because it could have some fluid coming out on me. And I'm just gonna make sure it all drains right into that beast. I'm gonna drop that rag right in there since it's already soaked. Deal with that later. All right, so now we got the filter off. I'm gonna go ahead and Put this filter over in the other catch and i'll be right back so we can put the new filter on all right i'm taking me a little coffee break uh i got the pan off got it cleaned up mm, can't beat that let me take a look at this pan here and show you so we got nice and clean these are the four magnets right here you want to make sure you clean all the metal chips metal shavings and sludge off those get the pan really good and clean and I wanted to show you this plastic tube here. This is how we adjust the fluid level in this thing. When you get the temperature up there, this tube comes through the bottom right there, and with at 104 degrees, between 104 and 112 degrees, and the vehicle leveled out, the fluid should just be at that level, so it should barely be trickling out of this tube. So what I'll do is when I get the car running, and I have it warmed up, I'm gonna pull that off while the vehicle's running, and see and if it's not no fluid coming out i'm going to add fluid to it if there's fluid coming out i'll let it drain until it's just barely trickling out and then i'll put the drain plug back in i want to show you one other thing here too i had one bolt on the side that was really hard to get to so to make it a lot easier if you ever do one of these 2014 toyota cameras you just got to come around here and there's a 19 millimeter bolt that you'll see on the transmission uh, it's the uh, transmission mount. All I did was take off that bolt off that transmission mount so that I could raise up the transmission a little bit, be able to get my quarter inch swivel, a 10 millimeter swivel up in there and take that bolt out. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get the gasket ready and then we'll get ready to put this pan back up under there. Oh, wait, there's one more thing I wanted to show you before we cut. When you pull this pan off, you're gonna pull that filter out right there. It's absolutely important that you get this rubber O-ring right here. You double check up in the transmission, make sure that rubber O-ring is not up in there. And it's absolutely, absolutely important that you have the rubber O-ring on the new filter before you put it back up in there. And you see the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it up in place. If you forget that O-ring, it'll make for a bad day. All right, let me take another drink of coffee and we'll move on to the next step. Mm. That is good. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I, I put my gasket on there. I went ahead and started all the bolts. Uh, luckily this gasket will hold these bolts in place so it makes it a lot easier. I don't have to worry about the gasket moving around when I'm putting the pan up there. And I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, hold those bolts up there one at a time. Some of the key things to remember when you're putting the bolts in is you wanna get them all started before you even tighten any of them. So get every single one of them started and then I like to hand tighten them and then I'll go in my crisscross pattern when I start actually snugging them down. But before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little plastic piece into the uh, drain pan like so. And I'm using my six millimeter Allen. And I'm just gonna hand tighten that thing up in there. That takes care of that business. Now I've got my tube level set where I need to set it. And now I'm just gonna simply put this pan back up in and start getting all my bolts started. All right, I got the, uh, I got all that complete right now. Um, got the pan back up in there. I got the bolts all started. I snugged them down and it went in my 
uh, cross um, you know, cross configuration as I tightened them up and I went ahead and already put the uh, the transmission mount bolt back in so now it's gonna be time to go ahead and put some fluid in this thing I'm gonna start off with uh, three quarts and see where that goes again if fluids coming out at 104 I'll just let it drain out until it barely trickles if there's nothing coming out I'll go ahead and add more fluid as I need it mm. that being said let me grab the fluid here and I went down to Walmart for like I think it's like three bucks I picked up this thing here the nice thing about this is it has a quick release so it closes off and it screws right onto the bottle itself and the tube fits right into this uh, the hole that's on the side of the transmission so it works out pretty good for what I need Let's put that on like so and you can see nothing's coming out yet I have to actually engage that opening so then what I'm gonna do I'll just pop this thing off matter of fact I'm just gonna take this whole piece off right here so that way I can just slide it right into that Pose right here. You able to see that mirror angle? All right, it goes right in like so. And then I'm just gonna let gravity do the work for me. And I'll just sit here and relax. And I'll do this for three quarts. I'll let you see how fast it goes. So I'll, I'll do one quart. I won't actually film all three quarts going in, but you can see it works pretty good. I can even squeeze it to make it go a little faster if I want. I can feel that it's almost almost all the way through. That's it, one whole quart's already in. Just that easy and I didn't spill any of it. Then I just, all I have to do is re-engage this little piece right here, close it off, put my finger on the tip as I pull it out, and voila, just that easy. I'll go ahead and put in two more quarts and then we'll fire this thing up and uh, let it get to uh, about 104, 105 degrees and we'll check our level. I wanted to check before I fire this up to check the level and I can see that my jacks dropped a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and jack it back up and make sure that that uh, bubble is a little bit more leveled out there and then I'm gonna fire the vehicle up run it through the gears a few times and let it get warm I got a little temperature sensor uh, that I can use a laser pointer that'll check the sense the temperature for me on the transmission pan and I can use that to uh, make sure we're at the right temperature before I start uh, checking the fluid level all right, now I'm just gonna fire it up. I got the fluid in there. I got it leveled out really good. Let's fire this thing up and run it through the gears and uh, let it get warmed up. All right, we're underneath the car here. It's running. And I'm just gonna point my little laser here at the bottom of that and kind of watch it temperature go up here. You can see we're only at about 87 degrees. 88, I'll give it a few more minutes. I take my temperature there. You can see it's about 104, a little bit over, so that's about perfect. I'll go ahead and drop this drain plug and let some of this fluid run out until it's just barely dripping. That looks like it needs a little more fluid. We'll put some more in it. added fluid until you can see some dripping out there now I know my levels good All right. that's pretty good right there I'm gonna go ahead and put that plug in oh. get her started there 
And that's it. Now I know my fluid level is full and it's at the right level. It's just dripping out there. Again, you don't need to go too tight on these things. I just snug it with one hand. And then uh, in about a week, I'm gonna go through and do another quarter turn on each one of my 19 bolts that goes around the pan gasket. Everything's looking good. I'm not seeing any drippage. So I'm gonna take this for a test drive and see how she does. All right, just so you can see, I've replaced my little uh, splash guard here with my two 10 millimeters. And then behind that was the 24 millimeter. I went ahead and just hand tightened that. Remember, just snug everything down. You don't have to crank everything and strip out your uh, transmission. Just crank it, snug it down and uh, should be just fine. All right, it's been about uh, two weeks since we did the job. We went ahead and we took on a couple of long drives, including a 14 hour round trip to uh, Fort Sam Houston. Uh, the transmission did really good, no issues, no sounds, and no leaks. I just got underneath it and checked the tightness of all the uh, bolts, did a little quarter inch, quarter turn on each one of them, make sure they're good to go. There wasn't a drop of transmission fluid, so I think we're good. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, this is Leanne, my camera girl, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, uh, please leave a comment, hit like, and we'll see you guys later.